Hello and welcome to Song Meanings and Origins. Last night while I was shooting a gothic homemaking video, I was digging around behind the throne that Orville sits in and I found this old top hat. It's the same top hat I wear on the cover of my country album, Hate Lives in a Small Town. So I thought today maybe we'd talk about one of those songs. And the song we're going to talk about is one that I get a lot of questions about, a song called Fear and Anguish. And as usual, we're going to start with the meaning of the lyrics. Like a lot of my songs, Fear and Anguish tells a story. And this story, I guess you could imagine it taking place in the Old West. Uh, it's a Western song. And uh, it starts out with the phrase, None of us will soon forget the day before those things arrived. What are those things? <laughs> we'll get to that. In the churchyard on a hill, a man had just buried his bride. She returned that day alive. So here's a man who's buried his bride and uh, his wife returns. I guess she's crawled her way out of the grave. Then it says, there's a silhouette on the horizon like an evil stain on the rising sun. And as it approached, we saw it was her and her eyes were red. And she said, you're all dead. Then collapsed down to the ground as if somebody cut her strings. So the song starts out right away with uh, a sighting of the undead. You know, there's, there's a zombie situation in verse one. And that brings us to the chorus, which goes, fear and anguish reigns ever since they came. We used to walk the streets of town, but now we know we never will again. And who's they? We'll get to that. That brings us to the second verse. Suddenly over the hill, a dog lets out an anguished howl. There ain't a beast this side of hell that could have brought on what befell that hound. He was torn from limb to limb. And this is mostly spoken. And then the vocals come back in in a singing fashion. It says, there's an evil stench creeping on the wind, reeks of pestilence mixed with death and sin. From over the range, that is where we found, scattered on the ground, 50 head of steer. But what's real queer, we searched all around, no other part was found. So that's a play on words. You know, when people say head of steer, heads of steer, they're talking about number of cattle. And what you find out as the song progresses is that the protagonist, the singer, is literally talking about the heads of the cattle. So it says, you know, we, we found littered on the ground 50 heads of steer. But what's real queer, and unfortunately nowadays when people say queer, they automatically think that means gay, but the actual meaning of the word queer is strange. And that's how I'm using the word in the song. What is really strange is that we looked all around and no other part was found. So it's kind of a, a lighthearted joke in the middle of this really, really odd and, and creepy song about some evil forces uh, that no other part was found. Literally, they only found the heads of the cattle. And then it gets back into the chorus with fear and anguish reigns ever since they came. We used to walk the streets of town, but now we know we never will again. What is it that is plaguing them. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. And then it gets into the bridge and it says, some say from the skies they fell. Are they demons fallen from the heavens? Are they aliens? Others claim they came straight from hell. So maybe they're devils. Some swear they are from the dark. Are they vampires? Yet others, they believe they came from our angry hearts. What does that mean? It's something nefarious, whatever these things are. It's something really, truly evil. And then it gets into the last verse and it says, And tonight we ride out of desperation over the, over the mountainside towards the reservation. See if they might know how to stand at the seat to see. You know what? I copied the lyrics off of one of those lyric sites because I didn't have them and the lyrics are wrong. So remember kids, if you want to know the real lyrics, get a hold of the artists because very often those, uh, those lyric sites on the internet are wrong. 
uh, but to correct the lyrics. And tonight we ride out of desperation over the mountainside towards the reservation to see if they might know how to stem the tide. And who's them? Native American tribe of some sort, I would think. Yet when we arrived, they turned their heads and the chief said, now you know how we felt when the white men came. And I'll get into a little bit about uh, what, where that comes from later. But clearly the Native Americans don't know what this evil force is either or are not willing to help for one reason or another. But they've experienced this before. And that's really what that's about. But we'll get into that later. And then we end the song with another chorus. Fear and anguish reigned ever since they came. We used to walk the streets of town. Now we know we never will again. A grim song, a grim story. Lives have been changed forever by this dark, dark, ominous force. And what is that force? Let's talk about the origin of this song next. I write songs in many different ways. Uh, and this is one of those songs where I definitely, it definitely started out on the guitar where I picked up the guitar and I started playing something that kind of sounded like a Western song to me. I think musically it's very inspired by Ghost Riders in the Sky, um, which uh, the version that I'm most aware of is the one by Johnny Cash. And, uh, you know, because it's supernatural, it's about some supernatural force, but it's, it, it's certainly a story. It's a story that's being told and it, and it has that Western sound to it. So I think I was playing and just kind of trying to capture that kind of feeling. And then slowly over time, words started to materialize. Believe it or not, I think the very first sentence that popped into my head was, we used to walk the streets of town. We used to walk the streets of town. Now we know we never will again. That line popped into my head and the story developed from there. Now the first verse says, none of us will soon forget the day before those things arrived. In the churchyard on the hill, a man had just buried his bride. That was not the first verse that was written. That was written later because as this song started to develop, it sounded like it would be a good follow-up to the song The Churchyard. So I consciously connected them by having the woman who is sort of uh, undead and presents herself towards the second part of the first verse is that woman from The Churchyard. And then as the verse goes on, it says, there's a silhouette on the horizon like an evil stain on the rising sun. And as it approached, we saw it was her and her eyes were red and she said, you're all dead. Then collapsed down to the ground as if someone cut her strings. That is directly inspired by a Japanese anime called Ninja Scroll. And at the beginning of Ninja Scroll, this Japanese woman appears and she looks like she's alive, but she's apparently undead. And she walks into the town and she says, Shinda, Shinda, you're all dead. And then she collapses to the ground as if some puppet master cut her strings. And that verse is directly inspired by that film. But then as we progress into the song, I have some very, very, very bad news for you. And the bad news is, I don't know who they are. I don't know. I never stopped to decide what this evil force was. As I wrote the song, it kind of developed as this terrible thing, but nobody knows what it is, including me. So Near Dark is one of my favorite vampire films. They could be vampires. They could be demons. It could be like a scene from Prophecy where they're demons from hell. I actually never decided what the evil force is. And to some extent, I find the song more interesting for it because it isn't really spelled out for you. You can decide for yourself what that evil force is. Now, as we get to the end of the song, you know, there's that scene where the protagonist presumably people of European descent go to the reservation to ask if the Native Americans have any idea what this thing is and how to stop this thing. 
and the Native Americans don't have a solution, but they say, now you know how we felt when the white man came. And it's not a dig at anybody, but I think it was important for me to show that however incredibly science fiction this sounds, however incredibly fantasy this sounds, however horrific this sounds, that your entire life, your entire universe could be turned upside down and everything that you've ever known is no longer something you can enjoy, is something that people have experienced all over the world over the last, you know, few centuries that humans have been here. Um, the Aztecs experienced it when Cortez arrived in Mexico. The Taino experienced it when Columbus arrived in Cuba. And the Native Americans experienced it when the Pilgrims arrived. Um, it's, such a, it's such a horrifying reality that one day this force can appear from somewhere else and they could be more powerful than you and just your entire life is sort of subjugated. And so I wanted to include this real life example that put some perspective on the fact that while this song is horror and possibly science fiction, it's something that humans have experienced. It is a phenomenon that humans have experienced, which then makes this crazy story not so crazy after all. Fear and Anguish appears on Hate Lives in a Small Town, which is an album of original country songs by me. This is my worst selling album. Nobody ever buys this one. I think the songs are really good, but I don't know. I think people are scared off when they see that it's country. Uh, this was my very first album working with Brian Viglione. Brian Viglione of the Dresden Dolls played most of the drums on this album and subsequently has played all of the drums on all of my albums ever since. So that was exciting. Although, um, I don't believe I was ever in the studio while he was recording. I was actually on tour when this album got made. Uh, I don't remember where, I think I was with Ego Likeness somewhere on tour, uh, but I think Brian Viglione was in the studio with George Grant. This was recorded at Planet Grey Studios when it was at its 5th Street location, and Brian came in and recorded the drums. Uh, Ken Zwerin played upright bass. Ken was a fellow who goes by Ken Ball, uh, who I knew uh, from the Slipper Room. He worked in a burlesque place that I went to frequently. And uh, he's a really, really lovely fellow, and he played upright bass, and I went to see him play one night, and I thought a country album could probably use upright bass, and I invited him to play on the album. Um, but really, the star of this album is a fellow by the name of Smith Curry. I don't even remember how I found this guy. I don't know if he was recommended to me or if I did a search for studio musicians, but Smith Curry is a fellow in Nashville, Tennessee. He is a multi-instrumentalist, and on this album he plays pedal steel guitar, banjo, dobro, mandolin, and, and telecaster. And the pedal steel guitar and the banjo that he plays on Fear and Anguish, I think, just give it so much flavor and it really places it in the environment that, that the song takes place in, which is this sort of antiquated Western time. And I think he just did such an incredible job. The album was mastered by Roger Leon at Master Disc. He has mastered every single one of my albums except for the first one. Um, and I think that is all there is to say about Fear and Anguish. I hope you're not too incredibly disappointed that I don't know what the evil force is either. But this is your opportunity to make up your own mind about what that might be. Thank you so much for watching Song Meanings and Origins. Let me know in the comments below what song you'd like to hear about next. And until then, hopefully no Fear and Anguish will visit your doorstep. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe so that you'll never miss another video on The Lair of Voltaire.